Gotta go pick up this trailer. Which one was it? Yeah, put the bearings on too, so the bearings are bad. I'm sorry? Yeah, the bearings apparently were pretty bad, like chewed up, and there were shavings in there. Where is he looking? I don't know if you can get It looks that. like they welded it almost. Mm, no, because it's a divot. See that? Is it a divot, or is it... You're talking so about not, that line, right? Yeah, yeah it's not raised. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. I look at these bearings. They look like, so this race, you can see all the hard faces are missing. Yeah. Should be nice and shiny from the hard facing. So, um, and you can see, the, look at the discoloration of these bearings. Yeah. They're discolored a lot. Who the knows? The races are pretty bad for sure. Yeah, man. Huh. Uh, the bearings aren't as bad as the races. Well, I mean, you're starting to lose the hard facing on them. Yeah. You know, you, you could tell because the bluing, so it's, it's been They're, getting hot. It's been getting hot. Yeah. So I think that somebody replaced the wheel seal on this before, and they might, might have got it hot. Because I think this is, I remember changing these hubs out because they were leaking, the actual uh, oilers. Uh -huh. And I, I remember seeing that the, the stub was ground off. So I think that they had this, I want to say it was this wheel that was a part well, about this trailer. And, and hopefully you won't be doing like one at a time. Have you done any other work before? No. Yeah. So the other ones, the other ones have never been touched. Yeah. Like the so you have never been back. That'll get expensive if we have to go through yeah. them all. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the thing about it, though, that's what happens a lot of time with these things. It's a telltale sign that eventually, if one goes bad, more than likely, you're going to have others follow. Right. It's just the way it is. You know? I think that this one's, I, I think this one's, the reason why this happened is this one. This is the one with the hole in it. But I've never seen... That's pretty bad. I've never seen that before. I could have failed pretty bad. Yeah, well, and the problem is when you have um, hard facing down to that point, usually it's pitted all the way around, you know, in, in, in chunks. That almost like it's like something, did something get in there? Well, not... Well, how? That's yeah, awful hard yeah. shit. Yeah, it's whatever. You know? But good it's... Thing, I, good I, thing you guys caught that. You though. know, I don't understand. Yeah. I've never seen something like that. Pretty pretty on the inside here too, is it? Yeah. Well, that that, that never no, uh, moves. Yeah. So when that's in there, that's yeah, that's it's tight against the axle, so that doesn't move. So, but I have a feeling that that's probably what happened is they probably lost that wheel seal because I know that one's the one that was replaced from what I remember when uh -huh. I took it apart. Yeah. Because like I said, they had the little uh, they had the little um, lock thing that was, it was ground off. Got you. So I wonder if they got it hot before I bought it. Yeah, and they just. You know, slam the seal. Never, never did anything with the bearings. So that's probably what happened. See all this inside? That's EGR. See how that suit? See how packed it is? That's all EGR. That is all exhaust gas recirculation on these motors. This is a common rail one, so this is like a 2350. But holy crap! Just look how thick that is. Look, look at it. Look how much. That's like, that's like three eighths of an inch. A crud all the way around that cylinder head. Yuckers. Missions good for the environment, bad for your motor. They're not good for the environment. I know, they just tell us they are. Uh, especially when they regen. It sends all that particles back into the air. Alright, guys. Here's our total. Thanks again, Harvey. You guys be careful, huh? Yeah, thank you, Harvey. Thank you. I'm showing her that cylinder head over there. Yeah, see, right? how, see how that happened? <laughs> That's all out of suit in that fucker. <laughs> yeah, stocked in diesel, stocked in California. Good repair shop if you need stuff done and you're in the area. Trailer's hooked up. And we're gonna hit the road. Anyway, that's what they what they did for a breakdown. So yeah, as you guys saw, um, those bearings, they were no bueno, no bueno. Hopefully no more problems uh, on this trailer though. Uh, hopefully, cause tired, tired of spending money. Really tired of spending money, but um, it's fixed up now. And uh, hopefully, hopefully somebody 
can find something to put on the trailer. That would be nice. I'm not driving home today. Um, I don't want to. What else? I'm just telling people I'm not driving home today. Oh. Because I don't want to. It's all right. I like driving. I know you do. Do you like spending all that money? No. <laughs> Especially when we have, we're making so much of it lately. Yeah. How, how was the load board today? Yeah. Pretty bad. They want you to run for a dollar eighty a mile in tarp eight feet. Yeah. And I'm not all about that life. All the lanes that are on the board too, uh, at least for flatbed, is they put you in really sucky areas where there's no work and you have a ton of deadhead to get out of there. So it's. Uh, Probably not the right trailer choice right now, but maybe the whole the whole trucking own authority spot market isn't the right choice spot right mark, now. Spot market, in my opinion, um, flatbed and dry van is really bad. Even in the Midwest, flatbed right now is really bad. When I looked at rates this morning for flatbed in the Midwest, it's probably about a 40% to 45% decrease in rates from what I seen the last time I was there. And rates coming out to the west coast from there was probably about the same. It was about the last load I did was the last load I did coming to California was fifty eight hundred dollars from Wisconsin for about two thousand miles, so just under three bucks. And I think today the most the highest rate I've seen coming back to California was like forty four. So more of the story is your worth isn't what it worth once was worth. Your worth, your worth is, is not what it used your, to be worth. Your worth is nothing to brokers. No. All right, we're gonna go home, guys. Ooh. Easy on that brake check. So the day is finally here. Martin is going to fix the Ford. So the Dodge is uh, somehow somehow going to tow this this Ford. Batteries are dead. Been sitting too long. I kind of like the tune it plays. <laughs> I don't know, but it plays the. Oh, it's flashing the headlights. <laughs> it's like going to a rave. Did he make it stop? Take these stupid things off. Okay, so after lots of uh, maneuvering, we got the Ford moved. There it is, right there, ready to be worked on. Hallelujah, I say. I say hallelujah. That is a heavy, heavy pig of a truck. Oh my gosh. Had to bust out the four-wheel drive even, but the Dodge did it. The only reason I had to bust out the four-wheel drive is because, you know, this gravel is pretty thick. Two subscribers. Oh no. Put that in a video. <laughs> Those two subscribers are probably so pissed. Look at this 9,000 pound turd. I moved it back here at the chain and that green one over there. It's quite the feat trying to get it all straight.
I gotta top that tree branch up for some wood. Maybe I should go to work on that. Maybe. It's almost as big as the damn house. Like, look at it. It's almost as big as a damn house. No, don't worry. I don't have those light rings in there like that other guy. Actually, it's got a bucket hanging underneath it. <sighs> that bucket's there to catch transmission fluid. It's actually not a bad truck. But it's a piece of crap. It keeps letting me down. They circle the problem. No, I'm just messing with you guys. I know you guys, some of you guys out there are diehard Ford guys. So I'm no brand loyalist, and I like this truck, but man, it's just uh, one thing after another with it, you know? And who knows, man, maybe if I pull this transmission, I'll go get another transmission, slam it in here. Maybe I'll keep this truck, and I got this turbo in the garage for it. It'll make it whistle like a SOB, and uh, maybe keep it. I don't know. My kids don't want to want to get rid of it they like riding in it when we go somewhere far but the small fuel tank and the fuel mileage then this thing sucks it is a big truck though anyway it's been a while man it's been a while it's been a while it's been some time since we've put out a video and a while since we've actually gone trucking i have not gone trucking at all since the uh incident of the wheel seal that we were supposed to go i've actually been offered some loads but I, uh, none of them are anything that really tickle my fancy. Um, that Washington load, it was okay. I paid like $3,100 on 870 miles and I could have got a load out of there. So, I mean, that was a good paying load. I'm not going to say it wasn't a bad paying load, but it's not something you can really get rich off of either, especially if you're only going to do that and uh, return load back because there ain't nothing coming out of Washington or Oregon that goes anywhere but California, really. So that's usually the case. I mean, I don't, if, okay, I'll put it to you this way. If I have to bounce somewhere to Oregon to get a load for 600, for 600 miles, not $600, 600 miles um, to go to California and it pays like twenty four hundred dollars. I'd rather do that than go all the way all the way to the Midwest out of Oregon for thirty four thirty five. Just doesn't make sense, you know. I, I'm not gonna run for that kind of money. I, I'm not pressured to run for that kind of money. This is why we've always said that you know, having a reserve in, in times of needs is where you need to be. And this is exactly why I don't like having payments. And I mean, if I had a dedicated run where I did something back and forth every single day. Yeah, I'd probably get into a new truck or a newer truck because fancy is old, but I'm not an owner operator just to get rich. I like the lifestyle of it. And I like the, you know, I like the downtime of it when I can get, when I can take the downtime. And if that truck's over there sitting, I'm, I'm not worried about having to pay a payment for it. And like right now, I just, I refuse to haul that cheap crap that's out there. You know, I, I do. Um, Anyway, in the meantime, while we were been home, Alice got, uh, I don't know how, she found this, either it was an ad or somebody reached out to her, or somebody looking for someone to talk about a, or no, to interview for a management position for a heavy haul company here locally in, you know, next town over in Lodi. So she wanted me to call on it because it's like, well, maybe I can get benefits and don't get me wrong, I, I, I really don't want to go back to doing something like that. But I figure maybe I can get some benefits for the family and stuff like that. And um, Not that I want to get out of the truck. I really do not want to get out of the truck. I like what I do. I genuinely do like driving. I don't mind doing it. And I, I went to talk to the guy. And, you know, it wasn't a bad job. It was, you know, it's trucking and it's managing. So it's stuff I've done before in the past and it's stuff I know. It's equipment hauling. I've done plenty of that. Um, it didn't pay enough. It paid good. But it didn't pay California good. And me being a sole provider for my family, uh, I wasn't going to take it. 35 bucks an hour in California will not cut it. You know, at least not for, for us here. It's just not going to cut it. And, you know, eight hours, nine hours a day, whatever you want to call it. Now, there was some possibility of making a little bit extra money driving, but 
it wasn't going to be enough because the driving was going to be hourly also and it was going to be like a hourly of the it was going to be a percentage of the hourly pay that they charge to move this local because it's mostly all local work i don't like local work i'm not a local guy I, I i've said this before i like to put a load on a trailer and not have to worry about it for a couple of days or at least a day you know so i don't not that i don't want to be home because i like being home obviously i've been home for a while i i don't like doing that kind of stuff i don't like punching the time card i don't like <sighs> having someone hover all over you and not that this person was gonna do it but i don't like local work i don't like having to get up at you know three four in the morning unless i absolutely have to every single day not that i probably would have had to doing that but you never know it just depends what you got to do and if you have to ever fill in and go on a rod and fill in you might have to so I'm not about that life. I'm as far as I would say on super troopers, I'm all highway. I am. I, I don't like I don't like short stuff. I, I don't mind short stuff when it pays, but in this scenario it wasn't gonna pay enough. So we left that alone. While we were doing that, um I had another uh I, I had another fire going. I was actually going to buy another trailer and I'm Still undecided about that. And the reason being is flatbed here is really dead. It's so dead that, again, they want you to tarp eight feet for marginal rates. And it's gotten to the point where I was seeing $1.80 a mile. Right now, they're like $1.40 to $1.50 a mile. And people are taking that stuff off the load board. It disappears. My local guy throws me a bone here every once in a while. But, man, he wants me to go to these crappy areas that nothing comes out. Nothing, nothing good is ever coming out of there so it's like a really long deadhead so it, I, i'm just tired of it you know so i, I don't want to do that I, I i've kind of been i love doing open deck work but i don't want to do it for free you know if i have to tarp eight feet it's gotta pay it's gotta pay and lumber let's just be honest lumber doesn't pay lumber is cheap it's so it's never paid good unless you get lucky it's just not one of those loads that want to pay i don't i don't necessarily like hauling lumber even though it's easy it's just it's boring you know, if it's like I want to go home, yeah, I'll put a load of lumber on out of Oregon, but I don't want to load lumber out of here, put 48,000 pounds on a deck for a dollar fifty a mile when it takes 75, 80 cents right now to operate or a fuel discount. I, it, that doesn't make sense. I'd rather be a company driver for that kind of money, you know, beating up your own equipment. So, was going to go buy a reefer. Yeah, 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 I know. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have sold that reefer or should. This is why I sold that reefer, right? Now I was going to buy a reefer because the reefer rates here are good. And ideally, the reefer was a, a part of a bigger picture of relisting our house and getting the hell out of here. And we were literally going to do that. Okay. We were working on the house. This is why we painted it. This is why we were doing all sorts of work on it. We were going to relist it. Um, got a couple other things that we wanted to do to this house. But then I got reached out to by an old friend. And he said, hey, why don't you come back and run for me? And I said, hmm, that might be interesting. So I don't know what we're going to do. I still can get the reefer. I'm thinking about getting it. But the other run is a little bit they're both dedicated runs so if i were gonna if i was gonna do reefer i was gonna do a dedicated run with this other run it's gonna be a dedicated run also um they're both good runs so i've been kind of way sitting at home weighing my options on what's better and what do we what we what, what would we rather do on that note i guess you guys will have to tune in and see See the drippy, I'm fitted up. Fit it up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Fit it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Get the pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Fit it up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Mm. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. Ooh, I've been on the flex since flex on.